Hi, I'm Pam Lee, an instructor and artist at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, here today with another Art in Action. I'm honored to be on Suquamish land and will be creating a project called Personal Cairns. Cairns, stacks of stones, have been used to mark the way throughout history. The oldest known being built between 5000 and 2000 BC in the Neolithic era, commonly known as the Stone Age. Cairn is a Scottish word that denotes stones that have been placed intentionally on top of one another to form a pillar or mound. The practice of stacking stones has been used in many cultures. The stone figures of the Rapa Nui, who were Polynesian inhabitants of Easter Island, Chile, created over 1,000 stone figures. These moai are Aringa Ora, the faces of living ancestors, and have been found since 1200 CE, another way to honor those whom we love. Stone stacking has been used to rebalance the energy of a place and those who pass through it. They can rid travelers of exhaustion such as a nuksuk, which are stacks of rocks made by indigenous peoples that denote water, food, or land boundaries. Artist Andy Goldsworthy is known for his cairns, my favorite being the one he built in the water, which was often destroyed by the tide as he tried to construct it. Wonderful in many ways, they are also harmful. The removal of the rocks from the soil can result in erosion, and habitats of many animals are inadvertently destroyed. Then there are cultural reasons, like the modern cairns that are made amongst ancient shrines from pilgrims who have walked the Camino de Santiago de Compostela during an earlier time. This changes the landscape. Should it be changed? Cairns are also used in astronomy and solstice celebrations to mark the passage of the seasons. Some inexperienced stone stackers have disassembled ancient cairns to create others without knowing their wayfinding meaning. Displaced cairns can cause others more familiar with the ancient cairns to lose their way. These new cairns are often part of a spiritual practice, but they defy the leave-no-trace rule of wilderness adventuring. So how to mark, make a cairn that does not destroy the way for others, but creates a landmark for our own personal history? What if we were to mark our own seasons, rebalance our energy, or give grace to what or those we have lost or learned from? who abide with us even though they have left the earth, enter into the personal cairn, made of elements close to us, pieces of our history that hold meaning. So think of those places and people who have formed you. Gather elements that matter, some strong glue, and balance. Okay, so this is a crazy cairn I made. I know it doesn't look like a stack of stones, but this was a box I had made. I was playing with epoxying paper and just seeing what kind of shapes I could create. So this was sort of like a sample project that I did a while ago. And then this jar is, gosh, I've probably had this for 30 years, believe it or not, but it was filled with Gloriosa um, sunflower, not sunflower, um, Rudbeckia seeds that my husband's grandfather had collected from his beautiful garden. And my daughter wants them, but she, they're in an art piece now, she can't have them. And this is my mom's sewing pin cushion. It's probably filled with needles and pins, but I chose to use it in a piece instead. And I have chickens. I have a particular rooster I adored named Zeus, and so he's in the art piece too. The clothes pins, came from my friend Debbie Lester's aunt's house in Kentucky. And, oh gosh, I don't really know how old they are, but they're quite old. Now they fell off because a lot of my work falls apart in transit because I have to figure out what kind of glues to use as I work through the piece. Right now I'm using Beacon 3-in-1 craft glue. I like it because it's acid-free, it's waterproof, it dries clear and it's really easy to use and it's fast drying, but you have to sacrifice a paintbrush because it'll ruin it. So I just try to take care of this brush even and use it over and over again for this purpose. Now this came off because the weight of the clothespin was stronger than the, the glue adherence of the paper to the box. So hopefully that will do the trick.
So sometimes when I'm doing a bunch of different pieces, I start mixing things. These were part from a different project. And I decided this piece desperately needed them. So I will place the little milagros with snippets of poems on the back of them into these clothespins because they need to hold something. They just felt like they needed to be a little more exciting. And this way, if you came by this piece of art, you could take one of the hearts and keep it with you and think about its meaning. And here's another piece that I worked on. It too is having glue issues. That is typically my main problem. My husband has been working on our house for years. And right now we've been wanting a bathtub for about four years. And this is a wish for a bathtub. So here's the house and here's my husband and the rest of the family, this is my son, but the rest of us waiting for this bathtub. With this one, I started making these shoe cairns because I thought how interesting that cairns have been walking through time. But I made lots of little cairns and put them all together in a piece because I wanted a story or I wanted your imagination to go somewhere. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share any work inspired by this project. Until next time, it's art in action. Thank you.